Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of A Different Life, uh, where we get an opportunity to speak to a different saint every week and ask him a little bit about their life and examine the different virtues that led them to God. Today is kind of a special day because we actually have two saints instead of one. How are you guys doing? Saint Maximus and Saint Demetrius, how's it going? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Doing well, John. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, so, in the beginning of each show, we ask our saints if they can tell us the meanings of their names and if they know the origin of it. Can you guys do that for us? Sure. Well, my name came from my father, who was an emperor, and my name is Maximus, which means the greatest. My name means gift. We also like to get to know our saints a little bit better. So, we ask them to tell us a little bit more about their family, their background, history, stuff like that. So, if one of you guys would do that for us, that would be great. Well, my father, Valentinian, was from was Roman emperor, and he was a great man. And my family was very spiritual, and they grew, they brought us both up in the in godly ways. And we had, we read a lot of the scriptural books and the spiritual books as we were growing up. One of the main people that was involved in our lives that really influenced us was our teacher, Santa Gabius. He was very involved in bringing us closer to Christ. Also, can you guys? Uh... Let us know a little bit about how you first met Christ or kind of what gave you that first push, that first drive. So beginning in, from our family and inside our, our home, inside the palace, it really felt like a church inside, of, inside our home to begin with. Um, but then we really felt like we wanted something a little bit more out of life. We felt this world was, was a little bit too temporal. And so we wanted something deeper, something more long-lasting, more eternal. So that's when he went out um, and went to the desert. Um, and one of the main people, again, was Santa Gabius, who really, who really got us involved um, with that. That's great. So let me ask you this. Um, everybody has um, a way that they approach Christ, a way that they go to Christ. Um, you guys chose to go to the desert. Um, it's not a choice taken by many people. Um, I mean, we know of a few church fathers that have done that and a few saints that have done that, but on a larger scale of the Christian population, you guys are still a few. Um, so why choose uh, to go to the desert? Well, we actually initially started by going to the sea initially. We are mm -hmm. both skilled in working with sails and pe people actually used to put our names on their boats because there used to be miracles performed um, by this and, and people would actually their businesses would do very well if they would prosper if mm -hmm. they affiliated their business with us from the sea we ended up going to the desert and that's the, that was our main goal just to follow the desert fathers and the monks that's really where we felt the solitude and the uh, where we can feel the closest with Christ without the distractions of this temporal world. So a part of the show is we, we give people an opportunity to 
call in or video in and um, ask questions to the saints because this is kind of like a rare opportunity. Uh, so we have a few um, girls that work with the show and they're out interviewing people right now and I'm being told that uh, Caroline actually has a question for us. Hey Caroline, how are you? Who do you have there with you? Hey John, I'm here with Daniela and she has a question for Saint Maximus and Demetrios. What's your question? How did you guys leave everything to go uh, follow life just for God? Thank you, Daniela. So the, our lives, we felt initially, <clears throat> when we were at home, it wasn't really fulfilling. We wanted something deeper. We felt this life was too superficial, too temporal. It wasn't going to last forever. And through the readings, of that we used to always do spiritual books and things like that um, we knew there was more to life so it actually in the beginning was was easy for both of us we were both on the same page we really felt God drawing us to the desert and really away from this sort of normal life it's funny that you say you felt God draw you to the desert because um, nowadays there are some people that choose monasticism as a last ditch effort when, for whatever reason, they're not being successful in their life. Um, so I, I guess I'm trying to understand a little bit more. Um, is monasticism a call from God? Yes, it definitely is. There's nobody that becomes a monk without the Holy Spirit guiding them and, and, ask, and telling them to go to the monastery. And we, and we felt that call. We, my brother and I are always very close. And... We, we felt that call since we were young, and we've always read uh, certain, and we always heard about certain saints like Saint Macarios, and that was one of our main people that we always looked up to. Um, so it definitely is a call. It's not something that you just decide on like a career, but it is something that is, that is a call, and it is not easy. So once you get that call, you have to be very perseverant in your prayer. So you guys had a, kind of like a special circumstance with having each other. Um, a lot of saints that we learn about, they kind of walk the road alone all the way until they reach the kingdom. Can you tell us a little bit about the benefits of having each other during this journey to Christ? Uh, it is as King Solomon says, that two are better than one. And if, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion. And we were very blessed to have each other. Um, many times in the desert, there's deep dryness. And I always had my brother there to lift me up. And I tried to do the same for my brother. And it was a big blessing to have each other, to encourage each other, to, to look to God, and to hear God's voice, and to continue on the road. So, if I'm hearing this correctly, the bond between you guys definitely helped a lot and it kind of eased the way a little bit. Um, nowadays, um, hopefully there's a lot of youth watching the show so they can get something out of your experience. Um, a lot of them have friends from different walks of life. Uh, some don't believe in Christ. Some are doing different things like drugs or uh, different experiences that Christ doesn't condone. Um, what kind of advice can you give them and how to choose a friend or how to choose a companion that's going to walk with them to Christ. Uh, we are fortunate because we were born twins, so we always had each other growing up. But for those who are not so fortunate from the beginning, it's very important that they find certain either youth groups or groups of friends who are most Christ-like as they can, the most unselfish individuals and the most people that will look out for the needs of their friends rather than themselves. And if you find yourself getting in trouble with your friends, with a certain group of friends all the time, I would use that as a warning early on and try to find those that keep you out of trouble and even more help build you up. Let me ask you about something. Um, walking away from your family and going to the desert, uh, did you at any point feel that your family was disappointed and maybe you can tell us how they reacted? when you left and you moved on to the desert? So our father, the emperor, was very proud of us by going, going up in the ranks. Um, he felt he really wanted us to proceed in the spiritual life. But when he got closer to it, 
closer to monasticism, actually him and our mother and her sister really did start to miss us a lot and they, that attachment kind of overcame them. When the patriarch passed away, actually our father was excited because they want me to become the next patriarch. I, I did not proceed with that. I felt the, the desert was calling me more. But my father, our father was actually excited about that opportunity. But at the same time, our family really was attached, maybe a little bit too much, but it's, it's natural. Um, I'm actually being told that we have another question from outside. Hey, Christine, how are you? Who do you have there for us? Hey, John, I'm here with Patrick, and he has a question for St. Maximus and Demetrius. What's your question? Did you ever feel abandoned by God while you were in the desert? Thank you. Yes, um, we, we have felt abandoned while in the desert many times. And that is, a, just being in the desert itself um, leads itself to a lot of feeling of loneliness and abandonment at times. And that's when we work together and we pray together all the time. Um, and that's when the encouragement came along, as Matthias was saying earlier, um, to bring Christ's power and love back into our, into our lives and help us to really feel like God's presence there with us at all times. Was there any events that happened that kind of really outlined the fact that God was always there? Yes, uh, while we were in the desert, we felt abandoned and alone in many occasions. Um, that was, I felt that was the nature of what we were doing and where we were. But at the same time, we always prayed for each other and prayed with each other that God would always show His presence in our life. Even when we were in the middle of nowhere, that it felt like in our, at one point we were building a cave that St. Macarius, you know, taught us to build. And there's, there's beasts and scorpions and everything you can imagine out there. And it does um, wear on you. But God was always there. And through prayer, we always felt His presence. And there was a moment even before we got to the desert when we used to work with sails for the ships that would come through. That um, from that experience and on our way to the desert, we, we hit a point where we... We were very thirsty on our way, and there was really no water around except for the sea, the salt water. And we prayed together, and at that point, God did turn that water into fresh water so we can drink. Wow. So God always came at the perfect moment um, and brought us out of that feeling of abandonment. Actually, I think we have another question from outside. Um, hey, Lena, how are you? Who do you have there for us? Hey John, I'm here with Maria and she has a question for St. Maximus and Demetrius. So what's your question, Maria? What was the most beneficial thing you learned while living in the desert? Thanks. I would say the most beneficial thing we learned in the desert is how to hear the voice of God. It's very easy to hear the voice of God when you're in the wilderness because all the other noises are gone. And it was very difficult for us to really hear the voice of God when we were in the world because there are so many other voices. There's the voice of family, there's the voice of friends, there's just the general noises of the world. But in the wilderness, the voice of God is very clear at all times. And it's a really big blessing. Um, let me ask you guys this. I mean, this show is about us trying to find... Um, saints that we can mimic and we can look up to. Um, did you guys have a saint or a Bible character or somebody that kind of helped you across the way or that you look up to? Yeah, early on in our path, when we were in Syria, St. Agabius was one of, was our main teacher. And he was the one that always brought us into spiritual books and um, taught us about, about Christ um, and about monasticism. And um, that's actually when we became monks when we were with them for about six years um, during that time. And then he was the one that actually led us to St. Macarius from there, and that's where we moved on from there. Would you guys, um, would you guys suggest to people to go out and find a spiritual guide, a spiritual leader, or is it not necessary? I think it is necessary. Uh, I would more than suggest it. I think it's imperative that you do find a spiritual leader um, either in your father confession 
um, or even your Sunday school or your Sunday school servant um, or someone that you can really trust who, who follows the Bible and follows the church teachings closely and who them themselves um, confess regularly and have a growing relationship with Christ. We're coming towards the end of our show. Um, and I don't really like that because <laughs> I'm not going to really get a chance to sit with you guys again. Um, but before we get to the end of the show, um, I was wondering if you can um, tell our audience, maybe uh, combined between the both of you, three virtues that truly helped you in the walk of Christ and maybe a little bit on how they helped you each. I think we would agree that humility was one of the main virtues. We both came from a very prosperous family, with our father being the emperor and growing up pretty much in a palace. But we learned through humility that this world and all that it has to offer really is nothing compared to what our eternal father has to offer to us. That's really what brought us out to the desert and kept us going. I think another virtue was silence. When we were in the desert, we would pray. We would pray together, but also on our own. And when we prayed, there was actually many moments when there would be beams of light going straight from our mouth to God up in heaven. Um, people would see this sometimes. Um, even Seth Macarius himself saw, saw that. So I think just the silence and prayer together not going out in the streets and praying and, and the like, but just closing the door and, and praying in our own quarters um, really helped us get, get through living in the desert. Another virtue, um, I believe, would be faith. That faith really was one of the big virtues that we, that, that got us through also our lives in the desert. Um, that time, like when we are running out of water, we, there's not, nothing we can really drink around and God really showed us that there is, there is drink right in front of us. We just have to change it for us to, to fresh water so we can drink it. Um, and there's other times, um, God has actually blessed us with the gift of healing also. So early, early on um, we did, through God's grace, we're able to, to heal others also um, from the various sicknesses. Well, we're kind of accustomed on the show now uh, that we ask uh, each saint that we sit with and talk with to close us out with a short prayer uh, just to kind of bless the people that are watching and give us a chance to get their blessing. So if one of you would please just give us a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this time we've spent together, Lord. We thank you for your presence amongst us always, Lord, and, and for always gathering us together. We thank you, Lord, because we can do nothing without you, Lord. And it is only with your grace, Lord, that we are able to do anything good. We ask, Lord, that you use us, and that you continue to dwell in us, Lord, and, and show us your way. We pray for the youth, Lord, and and we ask that you continue to guide them, Lord. And just as you, can, you encouraged me and my brother Maximus, Lord, all those years, that you continue to encourage them, Lord, and guide them, that they may find you, Lord, and that they may taste of you, and that they may know how sweet it is, Lord, to have communion with you. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the prayers and intercessions of all the saints. We ask you, Lord, to hear us as we say thankfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. San Maximus, San Demetrius, it was a pleasure and an incredible blessing to have you guys here with us. Uh, please watch out for us when you go up there and hear us when we ask you for intercessions, I guess. Alright guys, so we're at the end of another episode. Um, I think this was incredible uh, to have two brothers that dedicated their life at the same time together um, to reach one goal, which was Christ. 
Um, take him as an example. Go out, find a friend, find a group of friends where your main goal is Christ. Uh, we heard the virtues that they talked about, and I think these are simple virtues that we can accommodate in our life and we can use to provide us with guidelines on our way to the kingdom of God. We'll see you next time, and stay tuned so you can see who we have next in our, in our list of saints. Okay? Take care. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Yeah.